Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. And we're going to... I've got a very few slides. I just want to read this scripture and then we're going to see what the Lord has to say for us today. We're talking about the triumphal or the triumphant entry. This is Palm Sunday. It's the day we celebrate where Christ came into Jerusalem. It's the Passion Week. We're leading up to the days where He would give His life for you and for me. The culmination of which, of course, is Easter Sunday when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But we're in the book of Luke chapter 19, and it says this. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, and it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away or sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as they went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we come before you today, and we just want to hear from your word today. We want to hear your word for us today. We want to bless your name today. We believe that you are the King of all kings and the Lord of of all lords. And we want to be obedient to you. We want to be in your will, God. We want, to, we, want to, we want to hear your plan for us right now. And so, Father, I pray that your anointing would be upon each of us to hear and receive whatever it is you have to say to us, God. And we just claim it and receive it in Jesus' name. We're going to give it everything we've got today in our worship and praise because we believe that you deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody said amen. 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 The first thing I think about, and that's, we're just going to go with the Lord today. The first thing I think about when we read this text is we've been talking about the scarlet thread and how God has a plan. You know, before we know it, we even need a plan. He has a plan. And so he puts things in the Word of God that sometimes we skip over and we don't really pay much attention to, but they're important because they're in there. Right? And I don't believe God was wasting ink when He said what He said in the Scriptures that we read. And the first part of Luke, uh, in verse 28 there, 29, I noticed where it said it came to pass that when He drew near to Bethpage and Bethany and the mountain called Olivet, that He sent two of His disciples. And why, why did He tell us that? Why did He tell us about... Uh, Bethpage and Bethany and the Mount of Olives. You know, why did he tell us that? And then I'm reminded in my spirit that uh, in the book of Ezekiel, if you go back later and look at it, Ezekiel chapter 10 and chapter 11, it was a very dark time in the children of Israel and their nation where the Spirit of the Lord was actually leaving the temple. Maybe you remember that where the, the Spirit of the Lord lifted up and went out through the threshold and actually left the temple and was leaving Jerusalem. What a time that the Spirit of the Lord would just would leave. He gave them time to repent and time to repent. They were going into captivity. They were becoming slaves. And the Spirit of the Lord was departing. And the Bible tells us that He went out through the east and He went and He stood upon the Mount of Olives. I begin to think about that. How interesting it is. But how the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, left out of the temple in the book of Ezekiel. Now, the Lord is returning in the same direction. He's coming back. 
So he starts there from the east, the Mount of Olives, looking from the, coming from the east, and you know where he ends up? He ends up in the temple. We don't have those scriptures on the, on the slides today, but you go back and read the rest of the story. You know what happens when Jesus comes into Jerusalem? When he goes through the city, they're all praising him. You know where he ends up? He ends up in the temple. It's God saying, I'm back. I'm back. You know what he does? He clears the temple out. They're selling the sacrifices. They're taking advantage of people is what they're doing. He overthrows their tables. He runs them out of the temple. He chases them out. And that week he teaches from the temple. And I think what it is, it's God saying, look, I'm back and guess what? I'm taking the place of all these sacrifices. You're not going to need these anymore. Yes, he threw them out because they were taking advantage of the people and they were selling them and take, taking advantage of them. But the true reason he was there is because these sacrifices aren't going to be needed anymore. Because God was back. And he was there with a plan and with a purpose. You know what's even more exciting? When we read our Bible, the book of Zechariah, it tells us that when, when the Lord comes back again, the second coming, you know what he's going to do? You know where his feet are going to land? His feet are going to land on the Mount of Olives we find in Zechariah. The Bible says when his feet touch that a great earthquake is going to take place and it's going to split and a valley is going to be formed. So we need to know, God, man, God plans this stuff out. He knows what he's doing. And he didn't just walk into Jerusalem that day and just happen to say, I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to come from the Mount of Olives. No, he knew exactly what he was doing. It was the way the Spirit of the Lord left the people of God. And it's the way he was returning to the people of God. And what we're going to find out is, even though the people were shouting and praising and later they were saying, crucify, crucify, the words they were saying, even though they didn't know it, they were fulfilling prophecy. And they didn't even know it. We rode in. Walked down from the Mount of Olives, rode, rode in on a little donkey. But the Bible tells us when he comes back again, they won't be on a little donkey. They won't be in humbleness as a king that brings peace. But he will ride in on a white horse as a warrior king. Isn't that good? Uh, let's, let's talk about the donkey for a minute. Because this is just interesting. A borrowed donkey. What if I told you it was a borrowed donkey, but it wasn't God that borrowed it? What if I told you that it was the people that had the donkey? They were the ones borrowing the donkey. What if I told you that really applied to everything we have? <laughs> Did you hear what Jesus said? Look, he said this, he said, if they say, why are you loosing the donkey? He said, just say to them, because, because the Lord has need of it. In other words, it's like God saying, hey, I need, a, I need, a, I need the donkey back that I've you know, been letting you, <laughs> let, let, letting you have for a while. I need it back. And what's amazing is, is the owners, they didn't argue. Oh yeah, the Lord needs his donkey back. Okay. No problem. Just go ahead. And don't, don't, let, don't think that just because it was a little donkey that was something inexpensive or cheap, this would have been a luxury for them. It'd be like someone coming up to you and saying, the Lord needs your uh, Cadillac. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, another Lord. <laughs> yeah, what if he said that? He said, the Lord has need of it. They said, okay. So I got to think, what if we respond in the same way? When the Lord sort of speaks to our hearts and says, hey, look, I know, you know, you know what, I, what I blessed you with? I, I, I need it right now. I need you to use that for me. You know, the, the, the talents and the gifts I placed in your heart? Yeah, guess what? You know, I gave, I, I, I'm letting you use those as a steward. I need them right now. Oh, well, guess what? The, the green stuff that's in your wallet, <laughs> in your purse. You know what? 
Yeah, I know you think it's yours, but guess what? No, I'm just letting you borrow it. And I need it right now. What have you said? Man, I know some of you are thinking, man, preacher, if you want me to praise, you've got to stop talking about money. <laughs> the point is, is that when we understand that it's not ours to begin with, when God says, I need it, then guess what? It's a whole different attitude of how we allow God to use what He's given us the opportunity to be a steward of. Because we all are stewards of the things that we have in this life and we need to understand that it's God. God wants us to use what He's given us to be stewards over. Prove to me, Pastor, that Jesus didn't borrow the donkey, but the owners borrowed the donkey. Well, let me prove it to you. Something maybe you never caught in the Scripture. He says, you're going to find a cult on which no one has ever sat. Now, I never caught this before, but can you imagine? Can you imagine going into someone's little farm and getting a, a little donkey that no one's ever sat upon and rode? What do you think is going to happen when you get on him? <laughs> yeah, you know what's going to happen. You're going to be holding on for your life. This is a donkey that no one has ever sat upon. But isn't it interesting? We don't read in the story that Jesus went bucking down the streets of Jerusalem, <laughs> holding on for his life. No, they put the they put the clothes on the donkey, and Jesus Jesus just sat down. And the donkey says to himself, of course. <laughs> Although donkeys can talk, we learned that about three weeks ago. The Creator. I'm going to carry the Creator today. See, what we forget is this creation is all messed up. But you know why it's messed up? Because of us. You know why animals are wild? Because of us. The sin. The sin that man brought in the world. That's why it's the strange thing. It's not the common thing for someone to have an animal that's tame. That's the strange, that's the uncommon thing. The common thing is that animals are wild. And if you, if you, if you do what you shouldn't do in their presence, they're liable to attack. Because creation is under a curse and it's all messed up. But when the Creator sat upon the donkey, all was right. I, was right. I wonder, I wonder what creation, I wonder what animals, I wonder what animals were, were they, they had to be realizing what was going on. The one who can fix all of this. Because the Bible tells us that there's coming a day where the child will play with the adder and the lion will sit with the lamb. That's the way it's supposed to be. But man has messed it up and sin has come to the world and it's all messed up. But the Creator has come and that's what was happening that day. He said, go find a donkey that's never been set upon. And I'm going to sit upon him and ride through Jerusalem. Nobody else might have known what was going on, but I promise you the donkey knew what was happening. The donkey knew what was going on. And are you willing to say yes to what he's saying? He needs. Are you willing to say yes? I read a story about a, a legend of this little city that had never seen the king. And the rumor was that the king was coming into town to visit with them, but they'd never seen the king. It never happened to them before. And so they were going to do it big, and they got made this big old vat or whatever you call it, just huge, and they were going to fill it with the best wine they had. And, and bless the king with it when they got there. It's what they were going to do. And so they got it, and every person in the village was supposed to bring a cup of the best wine they had. They were going to fill this vat with it and give it to the king to bless the king. Do you know what happened? The king got there, and he walked up to the vat, and he did a little spigot, and he put the cup under there, and he opened it up. You know what it came out? Water came out. 
It wasn't wine, it was water. And everybody began to look at each other because you know what everybody had done? Everybody had said, with this many people in the town bringing wine, I can just bring a glass of water. No one will ever know because everyone else is going to give their best. I can just bring a glass of water. Oh, I read that story and I thought, my Lord, that's the church today. Let somebody else bring their best. I'll bring. No one will ever know that I'm not giving. No one will ever know that I'm not serving. No one will. Guess who knows? God knows. Because what we can do as a church doesn't happen as a church because everybody doesn't say, God, whatever you need of me, I give you my best. That was free. We didn't charge for that one today for you. The Lord knows. And in the end result, you know what? Everybody knows and sees that we're not giving our all. And He is worthy of everything. He's worthy of our best, not our least, our best. And that's the way we should do. All right, all right. So he rode the donkey down through the streets of Jerusalem. And people were praising. They were waving palm branches. They were singing to the Lord. They were saying, Hosanna, which was saying, save us. They were saying, the king is here. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They were just getting after it. They were causing a stir. And you know what? He deserved that. This was the king. Uh, in his ministry, you look back, and he almost, he never really addressed that much in open or in public about his standing and who he was. He would ask the disciples, who do you think I am? But he never addressed it really in public up to that point. But his plan was, it's the reason he walked from the Mount of Olives, it's the reason he rode in on a donkey, because everybody would see that was a symbol of a king coming, was riding upon that donkey. And so he did it, he knew it, he knew what the people would see it as, and he deserved that because that's who he is. And the whole world should have recognized that. They were praising and praising. The kids were praising. And all the religious people were getting all upset and saying, Jesus, please tell them. Listen to what they're saying. This isn't right. Listen to what they're saying. Please make them be quiet. And Jesus said, if you were to make them be quiet, these stones would burst out in song. And I began to think about that. I began to think about that. As people, God gives us the choice to worship. He gives us the choice to praise. He gives us free will. It's our choice. Because with all of nature, He says praise and the birds sing, you know. The weed, the, the, the weaves. People take their weaves off and <laughs> praise. No, the leaves of the trees. <laughs> they wave, you know. Nobody do that, please. The branches, praise the Lord. All of creation. But with people, He gives us the choice to choose. Will we praise Him? Will, will, will we worship Him? Will we give it our all? Can you see the celebration going on? Can you see it? Can I tell you today that if we read on in the story, Jesus had a tear in his eye. He was weeping because he knew they didn't understand. They were exalting him as the king. That he knew they were looking, they were looking for a king that would that would put the Romans down and, and, and exalt them and give them peace and and he knew he was there for a much bigger purpose. And so as they shouted Hosanna, tears were streaming from his face. He was saying, Oh Jerusalem, if you only knew what would bring you peace. You don't need someone coming in on a white stallion right now. You need to repent. <laughs> You need to turn. You need to see that your Savior is here. You need to see that God is in your midst. That's what you need. I don't want to just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? 
I don't want to just praise Him because it's popular. Because that's what we find in this story of Palm Sunday. You understand that this crowd that praised Him on Palm Sunday was shouting crucify Him just a few days later? Because He didn't fit their plan. He didn't meet what they were looking for. He wasn't in their particular area of interest. I don't want to be just a popular praiser, you know? I want to be able to give God what He deserves no matter what. I want to give Him worship and praise and honor because He deserves it. And today we're going to praise Him because He is the King. And today we remember that on that day, almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked down from the Mount of Olives where He will return someday. And He walked, he walked and, and got a donkey and sat on the donkey and rode through town and cleansed, cleared out the temple and preached in the temple. And then He gave His life and He bled and He died for us. That's why we praise Him today. That's why we praise Him. He is coming back for us. And it, it, it excites us, especially as we see the world and how it is right now. We're excited because He's coming back for us. But listen, as we praise Him today, let us remember He is here to save. He is here to redeem the lost. He is here to purchase. He is here to change lives. He is here to forgive sins. He is here to cover with His grace. That is why He's here. And that is why we praise Him. Oh, we'll have plenty of time to praise Him as He returns, as we are with Him. We'll have plenty of time to praise Him in the marriage supper of the Lamb for His conquering and His victory. And as we come back to the earth, we'll have time to praise in victory. But now I think it is our time as a church to praise God because let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That is why we praise. We praise Him in His purpose. His purpose is the Redeemer, the Savior, the one who brings peace. That is why we praise. That is why we give it everything. Everything we have. As we stand, the praise team comes up, please. I want to tell you this. Because we're just going to let the Lord move today. And I told you today would be a little bit different. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know this. You and I were so bad, so bad, that God Himself had to come. No one else could do it. But God loves you so much that He was willing to do it. He was willing to do it. He is Hosanna, church. He is Hosanna in the highest. And I feel the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit that is here. Do you really know why He came? Do you really know why He came? The children that day were praising Him. They knew. They understood. Creation was giving Him glory and honor. They knew. They understood. The rocks were on standby just waiting to see if they were going to need to be used. They were ready. But today I ask you, are you going to be the rock that's just on standby? Or will you be the person that says, I will give Him praise. I will give Him glory. I will honor Him. I will receive Him as King. And as we worship today, we're probably going to worship slow. We're probably going to praise fast. But whatever you have a need of, I would love to minister with you and for you. If you want to trust in Jesus as your personal Savior, man, I want to pray that prayer with you today. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power, man, I want to pray with you today that you receive that. But I want you to know, above all things, the King is here. The King is here. And He needs you. He needs your service. He needs your gifts. He needs your talents. He needs you. He needs this church to give Him everything. He needs us to give Him our all. Everything we have. And I ask you today, are you willing to say yes to the Lord? Can we just wave the Lord an offering of praise as we welcome Him in this place? He's so good. He's so good. 
thank you, Jesus. Worship him in spirit and truth today. With your whole heart, give him honor. Give him the glory that is due his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look to your neighbor say, the king is here. Look to your other neighbor say, the king is here. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you. 